Hello and welcome to this video announcing our latest offering at Atlassian Analytics. So excited to show you this today. My name is Dave. A little about me, I came to Atlassian one year ago with the acquisition of Chartio.com. I was the founder and CEO of Chartio and we were required to help Atlassian really bring a lot more to data and analytics and bring that value to the customers. So we're here to show you today what we've been working on, what we've been building. I'm going to show you why we built it. I'm going to I'm going to take you through um, a, a little bit about what it's all about and our different data stack offerings. And then at the end, I'm going to show you a demo of that product. So uh, stay tuned. Let's start. Let's start with the beginning, of course, with the mission and, and why we built this. Atlassian's mission is to help unleash the potential of every team. Um, and, you know, to unleash that potential, to take action, to learn and improve, take some measurement. Uh, if you can measure that progress, if you can visualize it, you know where to improve. Uh, without that, you don't. And so we know there's a lot of potential in our data set to help you uh, with, with that effectiveness as a team. And we would like to help. Different categories of the, the data inside of Atlassian, different use cases, uh, we, we see four main ones, and that's use case around velocity blockers. So where are their bottlenecks in, in the, the flow, in the, in the productivity, uh, in the team? Uh, and this can help save you time, obviously. Then there's resource allocation. What things are under-resourced or potentially over-resourced, and how can we optimize that spend? Um, then ROI, like which, which of these efforts uh, are returning profit, which are returning a lot of value compared to how much resourcing we're putting in. All those things are hard to evaluate. Uh, and the, we have a lot of that data inside of Atlassian. And lastly, there's usage trends, um, just using the Atlassian products, which, which ones are getting used, which aren't, how can we improve that? And how, how can you maybe change your, your, your licensing model uh, if, if appropriate? So looking at and talking to so many of you about your data needs and what you're doing and, and how they're being met, we learned that our existing dashboards uh, have some limitations and they're usually pretty static. Uh, they're all very different across our different products and they're siloed. So you can only see data within one product at a time. Uh, and we know that a lot of our customers are using uh, data extraction tools, use, going through our APIs, using products like Fivetran and MuleSoft to pull data out of our APIs, put them into a, a data warehouse, and then visualizing those with something like Tableau or Power BI or, or any other product out there. Um, that's a lot of work to set that up. People are doing it. We've been really impressed with the dashboards we're seeing because there's so much value there. It's, it's exciting to get that data, um, but it's a lot of work to go through it. We know from talking also to our data center customers that one of the one of the hesitancies they have in moving to the cloud is that data access that right now in the data center, you can just hook right up to the Postgres database. And that raw access and the dashboards you can create from it is really powerful and really helpful. People really like that. So we wanted to give that same experience of that raw queryable data source access directly to uh, people, but in the cloud and much better. Uh, we want to give that same access. So I'll, I'll bring you across that. First, we'll talk about our existing data stack um, and different data offerings right now. And at the very top of the things that are very targeted, very in context, not changeable, but, but very helpful right where they are, uh, things like our JIRA contextual insights. And those are really cool things where in JIRA, for instance, when you close an issue, you might sometimes see uh, a, a visualization pop up and show you that burn down chart, show you some extra context that you're really going to enjoy. And we, we think you're going to need and want to know uh, in, in, this, in the flow of your work. Next, going down, uh, as you go down the stack, you get a little more uh, flexible and a little more power, uh, but it's less targeted. Uh, and so those are like the in-product dashboards that we have. We, we just talked about those of the, the various different Elastic products have, have, have various states of in-product dashboard experiences. And today we're announcing two new awesome layers to this data stack. One is, I'm going to start from the bottom, go up. I'm just so excited about both of these. So the, the bottom one, I don't know any other company that's offering something like this. 
Um, but we are offering a data lake, a cloud-based data lake of all your Atlassian data. And you can hook directly into this data lake uh, with any of your BI products, any of your internal tools, and query directly against it to create what, whatever you, you need to create your dashboards or whatever. This is also, this is again like th what we heard from the data center customers that they just liked having that raw access to the Postgres. You, they can do and do do really powerful uh, and flexible things with it. Um, this is better than that though, in that uh, one, it's not just one product. It's not just Jira or Confluence. It's, it's all the Atlassian products together. Uh, and two, uh, we've already done a lot of the data cleaning and data modeling on top of it. So you, arguably this is more of a data warehouse than a data lake, um, but that's semantics. Uh, it's, uh, but if any of you have ever used like the Jira issues table, for instance, in the Postgres table, you know, it's a really normalized table. It's really hard for anyone to pull good insights out there, a good data analyst to come in, has to really pick it apart. We've done a lot of that denormalizing and making it simpler so people can really dig through the data. Next is Atlassian Analytics. And so we don't just want to give you that raw data access. We want to really help you use it, take it to that next level. And as soon as you start with Atlassian Analytics, you got to connect to the data lake and we automatically create a bunch of starter dashboards for you. So a lot of the work's done for you. Uh, we, we try to get you as far as we can and we know you're going to want to customize a ton. So you totally can. You can customize right there. And Atlassian Analytics has a whole dashboard and chart creating product that um, allows you to, with no code, drag and drop and write SQL against that database. When you want, you can switch to SQL mode and have that raw power if you want to write in text-based SQL uh, or go back to that, that visual mode and drag and drop. All kinds of charting capabilities, all kinds of settings. Um, and again, kicking you off with those starter dashboards to get going. Uh, and so, yeah, this, this means you don't have to build your, bring your own BI tool. You don't have to use those other things. And we start you off further down the path. So just recapping here, uh, the capabilities here, we're really enabling you to do data-driven decision-making, especially on top of your team and your Atlassian data set. You can analyze data your own way using SQL mode, visual SQL, or bring your own BI product connect that. That's, that's totally fine too. Um, and then we're offering holistic insights where we, we let you bring all, we automatically bring all your Atlassian data sets together. Uh, and then you can also with Atlassian analytics connect to your own databases, be it your own MySQL, or if you're on Google BigQuery or Redshift or segment, or sorry, um, Snowflake, any of those you can connect right into Atlassian Analytics and plot along next to your Atlassian data. And the speed to access this data is just kind of unprecedented. It takes a couple of minutes to set up. Uh, and then again, you get starter dashboards out of the gate. Uh, and we think uh, it's going to just make that time to value just so much better for you. And we hope that means you get a lot more insights, you get a lot more value from the Atlassian data set and from Atlassian as a whole. All this, of course, is built on top of our trusted enterprise cloud. That means you're going to get all the security and compliance, the data privacy and the governance that you would expect from any Atlassian product. So with that, let's dive into a demo. So when you first come to Atlassian Analytics, uh, an admin's going to have to connect your database. Uh, to your to the data lake and that takes a couple of minutes and once that's done you're going to see these default dashboard a whole set of default dashboards i'm going to walk you through a few of them now so here's one called jira software overview um, and it is exactly that it's it's just for all an overview of all your jira software uh, things um, this includes service desk software and business as different project types um, and just tracking issues created, time to resolve, uh, the status of them, you know, issues by status, issues by assignee and project. Uh, and below we have also filters and variables to drill directly into those, those issues at the issue level. Um, a cool thing we can, we can go here and just look at and filter, 
uh, and change this filter here to only be looking at the, the software issues. Um, and you can look at this and see this variable here is controlling all the charts that are highlighted in yellow. Um, and so it's a really powerful way to interact and build these interactive dashboards. And by build, I mean, you can build these yourselves. Again, these are just starter dashboards. You can totally customize, drag and drop, rearrange, uh, and resize and, and reset all these dashboards however you would like. Um, again, they're just starters. Um, another cool is, is we have comments um, dashboards. So you can say, you can t tag anyone, say, hey, AJ, this looks odd to me. You can have conversations around that data to say, hey, would you actually change this? Would you make it a bar chart or a line chart? Or you can say, why is this number down? What's going on? It's really nice to be able to have that commenting both at the chart level and the dashboard level to have that in, in context data conversations. Other, we're, gonna, we're going over first the dashboard creation, and then I'm going to go over some of the um, uh, uh, charting and, and visualization capabilities as well. So on all these dashboards, we have the ability to download as a PDF or a PNG to share it, obviously, to comment as we just showed. Uh, and we also have a cool thing called snapshots where you can actually go back in time and say, hey, on February 2nd, what did this dashboard look like? So that's really nice. And of course, we could download this version as well. Okay, I'm going to move on to look at some of the other default dashboards here. Uh, here we have the uh, simple project overview. Um, so this is basically kind of similar to the JIRA overview, but just looking specifically at certain projects. Uh, days to resolution, um, just look at them grouped by different resolution types and whether the resolved or created um, a bunch of various different charts uh, available here in this one. We also built flow metrics. For those of you familiar with the very popular flow metric framework, uh, those stats and, and dashboards are built automatically for you inside of Atlassian Analytics. This is very exciting for you to really measure the effectiveness of your teams uh, and to identify you know, velocity blockers in your flow, in your complete product cycle flow. Um, two different ones. There's an org overview and a team view uh, as these flow metrics. And as we get more and more data and add more sets, we're going to be making more of these starter dashboards, uh, potentially eventually of Dora metrics, all kinds of different uh, common flows, but for now we have the flow metrics. And then of course, JSW, JSM uh, also has a number of default dashboards looking at uh, these are the request managements and requests resolved and created over time. Um, very nice, useful set of dashboards here that again, you can filter by date or project type, all kinds of different filters available. Uh, and then here's a change management overview to get uh, the changes by risk, changes by type, uh, just overview of all the changes. So, uh, great. So let's go and actually show you how to make one of these charts. Uh, and again, these are all just starter ones, so you can totally adjust and, and, and clone and create and copy these and edit to your heart's content. But uh, one of the main things you're going to want to do is add a new chart. And here we see what we call our visual SQL. Uh, it's a visual way to write SQL, no code needed. Um, and this is the schema available in this data set, all the different tables that are available to us. And we can go through these tables. And what I want to do back on that dashboard, um, I think it was missing a count of the number of bugs. So let's go and try to find that. And I'm going to need issue ID here. And instead of grouping by issue, I do, I want a count of it. And then I'm going to choose another one um, that I think it's under type or status. I think it's type. And if we browse through here, I want issue type is, here's bug. That's nice. So I, I probably want this name column. So I'm going to run this query. And what's happening under the hood uh, is it's it compiled SQL and it's running that against the Atlassian data lake. 
Very nice. And so this is uh, a count of all the different uh, types uh, and by name and, and how many of each we have. I can maybe a bar chart is a little better. So we can see story, change, incident, task. Oh, here we go, bug. There seems to be 12 of them. Um, so that's not how I want to visualize it. I just want to see just the bugs. So I'm going to go here and add a filter of the name is bug. All right. And we're going to want to see that uh, as a single value eventually, but we'll do tail first. Okay. And there we have that. And I can actually go come down here and hide this column because I don't need to see that anymore. And choose single value chart. And then we'll say number of bugs. And save it. And now I can drop it in. It's way too big. We'll resize that. And drop number of bugs in here. So when learning Visual SQL, um, sometimes it can just be easier to make a copy of another chart uh, and dig in uh, and go edit that chart and dig in and look at all the different things possible. This, this one is a little more complex where it does two queries, one for this number and one for this number. Uh, and you can see it's wired up to all the different variables the drop down menus. Uh, and so when learning Visual SQL, you can simply go through um, and and edit these and, and clone them and copy them. Another great part is uh, Visual SQL writes SQL for you. And you can go into SQL mode and adjust this and you know write your own issues or change the name of something. Adjust the query or start from scratch if you want. Uh, we've got a really nice SQL editor in SQL mode with, with history, a bunch of variables you can use uh, that are available to you. All that nicely listed out here for you to write to your heart's content uh, in, visual, in regular text-based SQL, not just the Visual SQL. Um, so with that, that's an overview of Atlassian Analytics. Uh, there's so much more to cover. There, there's a lot we hope to work with you and getting this set up for you and that you find a whole bunch of value with us really trying to lean forward and give you that data access. We, we're really excited to help unleash some of the potential and insights that you're going to find.